if I win on one, I'm going to be happy. And if I get beaten on one that I should have won, I won't be happy, but I can move on. I honestly believe that. That's what keeps you level, I think. I think that's the main thing. For me, anyway. Don't get too high and don't get too low. I'm living in Pilltown here now, just five minutes from uh, from Joseph's yard, and I'm with Joseph three or four days a week. And then I'm on, I'm on the Corridor Tuesdays and Fridays, and I try and get up to Shore Crawford as much as I can once a week, maybe, or once a fortnight, so. Yeah, so I turned professional probably 2016, maybe it'd have been 23, 24, something along that lines. So it hadn't always been the plan to turn, really. I think if I had been more successful, point of point, than I'd stay that. Like, it wasn't that light. And, uh, but it kind of came to the stage where it was either stay gone quite badly, point of point, or just, I had nothing to lose by turning. And, uh, I just said, it was actually my mother who had been kind of pushing me to turn, really. She got the paperwork and done all that, and I mentioned it to Joseph. I said, look, I was happy enough to stay riding out for him, get a wage off him, and if I could get a few rides a week, to, just to make a few pound out of it and see what would happen, really. And like that was literally all the, uh, that was all the intentions I turned on. Punch you said this year, she was, was a great week, I was very lucky. Uh, not a track that I had massive look at before, but uh, came out there were four winners it was uh, it was a great week really. Uh, so obviously faster slow win the Gold Cup was a that was a big one. Um, massive day beat the horse they did gallop on the Champ uh, Brave Man's game and then by Allen, but uh, he beat them all on his merit now. Fairness to him and. He's an exciting horse for next year, hopefully. Yeah, so I've got a call now to ride in the Swedish National there in June, so something we'll consider and uh, see what we can make out of it in, in, in Stralmsham, a track I've uh, ridden around before, so yeah, something we'll definitely consider doing anyway. The main challenge of being a jockey is getting on good horses. That's the big one, especially in Ireland. Well, no matter where you go, England, Ireland, America, France, very competitive. There's a lot of very good riders out there, and there's only so many trainers, and there's so many horses with a chance of winning. So, the first thing is to get on them, and the second thing is to stay on them, and the third thing is to keep your name there. So, like, every day you go out, you have to give everything 100% and be motivated and do the best you can by the horse and the men that throw you up. And, uh, but every day you have to be on your A game because if you're not, you'll be sitting on this couch fairly often, you know. My weight is quite good now, it's it's better than it used to be. Uh, I usually like to be 10-2 every day. I weigh myself every day, that's um, one thing I would do. It's, it's I feel it's quite important to me. Um, with the weighing scales, it comes everywhere with me if I go on holidays. When I was an amateur, I hit 11.4 one time, like, so... As I got older, I got lighter, thankfully. At the Breeders' Cup last year, I was in my hotel room, and I got a knock on the door and uh, opened it, and Ryan Moore was standing there. He, he was doing, I think, 8, 9 or something that evening and meditate, and uh, he needed a scale, so... He headed off with the scales, and he rode two winners after it, so... That was the highlight of my Breeders' Cup. I got a shock when I opened the door, and Ryan Moore was there. I, I'm not really sure how many miles I do a year, to be honest. Maybe up on around 70,000, so uh, I've got the full license now and all, so that's going well, so it took me a while to get that. And, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really mind driving, you know, I listen to a lot of podcasts, and you just always entertain yourself for an hour or two and move on there to the next thing. And, you know, so it never really bothers me too much, to be fair. And, uh, I'm sure it, in Ireland, compared to England, it's a lot smaller country and uh, everywhere was within shouting distance really. I suppose the summer meetings, I suppose the only drawback is you could be down at half eight there in Ballon Robe of a Friday evening or whatever. That's the only drawback, you'd be back late and you'd be up early for riding out the next day. But 
other than that, it doesn't really bother me too much. There's a good difference between riding in Ireland and, and England. Uh, they probably go a good bit quicker in England from an earlier stage of race. They run at a quicker tempo and they will get racing earlier. You will have smaller fields, which means they will probably get spread out more, which means you have more space, I suppose, in Ireland. Bigger fields, they go slower, they ride tighter. So, like that's the big advantage to us when we go to Cheltenham. I, I feel 24 on our handicaps over two miles. We're used to that every day of the week, where the English dads might not be as so used to riding as tight. So, uh, I think that's a big help to us. I say there's not enough coaching, really. Yeah, like Tomas O'Brien, who's just retired there in Sandown um, last month. He um, he watches the Irish race and now he rings me. Once he was done riding, he rang me and he says, uh, "We want to make you better." So I said, "Grant," and he said, "He's gonna get a look at the race and go through it and." I watch every replay myself back and you know there's plenty of people, Daddy, Mark and Mammy will all be watching as well but he's kind of jumping on board a bit now and whatever he can see obviously is a big help too and he can see from, he's run over, run over a thousand winners in England so he's got a pretty good eye for a race and it's going to hopefully be a good help. I suppose I do set myself targets but then the problem with targets is if you don't reach them what do you do then you know? Like, but I, I do, I like trying to ride as many winners as I can as the first one and uh, do you know, I, I try not to let any ride get away from me and especially not any winner. Once I give myself the best chance to get on as many horses as I can, which should equate to riding winners, hopefully. And uh, I suppose the main target I set myself is to go out and give everything 100% and leave no stone unturned. And, at the end of the year, once you've given it your all, whatever has happened has happened then. You've either got lucky or you haven't. The yeah, home has been you know, important to me all along with uh, Mammy and Daddy and Mark and all. And Daddy obviously he trains a few and a few pine of pointers and a few for the track, a small number nowadays. We've two stallions, El Salvador and Centurion, so we're quite busy with that and stuff. So. We're getting plenty of mares there and there's always plenty of activity at home and when you go home there's always plenty of stuff to be done. It's, this time of the year he's breaking a few three-year-olds and whatever he hasn't been able to sell so we'd be seeing how they go along and loose screwing them and driving them and that's something we would, I would have always done all the way up along uh, when I was able to and uh, yeah so we have a good cross country course at home, and all the horses would school over the banks. And Daddy won the Latouche a few years ago. Barry Cash rode it, so that's probably the one race I'd like to win. The Wexford lads have been having a good time. It's supposed to be a good tradition of the banks racing in Wexford, and uh, it's great to see Benny win it this year and Richie O'Keefe. So it's one race I want to take off. I think above any before I ride off into the sunset too. I, I think you know.